Welcome to the A to Z of Licensed Games, a series of vids about games that take something from something else. Now I don't have an obscure game for you today. Instead I have one of the most famous point and click games of all time starring one of the world's most famous heroes, that whip cracking, treasure stealing, hat wearing, son of a gun, Indiana Jones. Now I do wonder if this game should technically count seeing as it is made by LucasArts themselves, but you know, screw it, I'm talking about it anyway. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis is a beautifully constructed, classic adventure title, one in a long line of such games made by the LucasArts bods at the time. The art style is fantastic, it captures the perfect balance between realistic and cartoony, and the script's so snappy, Indy actually feels like Indy, and he has a lot of great interplay with the characters, including his former co-worker and psychic Sophia Hapgood. Good job seeing as they spend most of the game together, you know, they really sort of have that sort of friction, plus that general camaraderie that you would want in two heroes. Right from the first moments of the game though, this just feels spot on, a level above any indie tie-in that had come previously. It's sort of like an indie opening that's played for laughs, Indy appears to be digging around an ancient ruin for some treasure at first, but it turns out he's only scouring the archives of his college, falling into all manner of traps along the way. It does a fine job of not only establishing a big character and the sort of game you're going to be playing, but establishing the classic LucasArts adventure game style. Right from the off, the two of them interlink and mix perfectly. Is that a surprise? Of course, the guys at LucasArts did have a large advantage. They could work closely with Lucasfilm themselves to get ideas for the game, a luxury most developers of tie-in games simply don't have. Hal Barwood, the game's project leader, already had a working relationship with Steven Spielberg. But you know, hey, if those tools are there, you'd be a fool not to use them. And the end result is something that's frankly far above a lot of the games in this list. The game also has, surprisingly, a lot of replayability and a lot of variation, something you don't normally see much of in point and click adventure games. There's a point in the game where the story breaks into three paths depending on your style. You can rely on either your wits or your fists, and you can choose to continue your partnership with Sophia or go it alone. Now whatever choice you make changes the journey quite significantly, they may even feature their own separate locations. And there's quite a few puzzles with randomised solutions as well, that keeps them fresh every time you play. You know, it's a touch you don't often see in adventure games, and when you look at something like this, you kind of wonder why. There's just barely a hair out of place on this title. It may have been just another one in a long line of great adventure games by LucasArts, and their excellence certainly shows, the game was a whopping great hit and deservedly so. You know, what can I say? It's hard to think of much to say other than just paragraphs and paragraphs of praise. It's a great game, and celebrated as such. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. That's the story right there. Okay, I now have a lot of honourable mentions to go through. Fate of Atlantis was simply the game that pulled ahead of all the other Indiana Jones games. The Good Doctor has, on the whole, been treated very well by the world of video games. Fate of Atlantis was even a sequel to another LucasArts adventure, an adaptation of The Last Crusade that's almost as well regarded. Oh, and as for all the others, well, there's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, an arcade game by Atari that I always quite enjoyed. You whip yourself around, rescue children, have a bit of a ride in a minecart and get those stones. It's a nice sort of old school gem. There's also Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade for the Mega Drive. Now, I've obviously played this, and my mind says that this is actually a very awful platforming game indeed, but I always dug it back when I was a child. It hasn't held up at all, and it is by tier text, but I just have fond memories. If you want some better indie platforming, there's always Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures for the SNES, which has basically all the daring action you could want, and lots of flashy graphics and Mode 7 Jiu Jitsu. It's a damn good title. And finally, I'll throw out a mention for Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, a 3D platformer from the days when a certain well-to-do British explorer was all the rage. It's kind of amusing to see an indie game so heavily inspired by Tomb Raider, but time has shown it to be one of the better Tomb Raider rip-offs of the time. Some would even say it's better than the games it was inspired by. I wouldn't, but you know, some people do. So that's indie. 
And that's hardly the end of matters. There's another guy kicking around who has a pretty short fuse. The Incredible Hulk is represented by two games here, the first of them being a kind of underrated hidden gem for the PS2. Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction is a 3D beat-em-up sort of game by Radical, the guys who'd go on to do Prototype, and it's easy enough to see the building blocks of that game here. There are, I suppose, missions you can do, if you so desire, but mainly the pull of the game is in the title. You break shit endlessly, and it's fun! Throw guards a million miles, leap through the air, grab them again, and pile drive them onto a car. That's the sort of level we're at here, and if that doesn't touch you in some way, well, you must be made of stone. I would also like to chuck in the Incredible Hulk game for the Mega Drive. Now, this isn't very well liked, and it is quite a bit clunky, but if you adjust to the game's crap factor, you have an okay if very challenging side-scroller, and I really do mean challenging. It's pretty annoying too. So, you know, your mileage may vary here. And while we're on the Mega Drive, we mustn't forget about Izzy's quest for the Olympic wins. Now, who the hell was Izzy, you may well ask? Well, he was the mascot for the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games, and for whatever reason, he got his own game. And funnily enough, it actually ended up being half decent. Yeah, funny how things work out, isn't it? But there is one other game that I would like to do a more detailed look on. It might not even count, but I think it deserves a mention at least. The 1995 PC adaptation of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, co-designed by none other than Harlan Ellison himself. It's a unique point-and-click adventure title, based more around moral choices than regular puzzling, and it's one of the most depressing games ever created. Not that you'd expect much less from a game that deals with the last five people on Earth being tortured for all eternity by a bored supercomputer. You control the five characters through their own stories, and it all comes together at the end in ways I shall not reveal. There's so much detail, so many scenes that are worth talking about in extensive detail, which is perhaps the reason why it's not the featured title, because to do a one-through of this requires more time than we have here. It needs a video all of its own. One day though, perhaps, one day, we'll do that. The game is far from the most competently designed adventure game in the world, and the animation is quite awful at times, but you can easily look past these things. Well, I bloody well hope so anyway. But for now, I shall put this game to one side and save it for a later date. It's time for another rather bland foray into the world of shit. The Simpsons will undoubtedly have their big time in the spotlight when we get to the letter S, but for now here's something quite lame, the itchy and scratchy game for the Game Gear. Way back when The Simpsons were still good, Itchy and Scratchy was one of the funniest parts. 30 seconds of mindless, mouse-on-cat violence, with devious traps and puddles of blood that left children in hysterics. So, let me ask you something. If you're a big executive in the 90s with a Simpsons brand to promote and a wallet to fill, you might ask yourself, what do we do with this popular show within a show? Now, if you answered, well, not much really, it might make a fun level in a game or whatever, but you could hardly stretch it out to a full game, then pat yourself on the back. If you answered, let's do a big itchy and scratchy game, it won't have any of the comedy or traps or anything complex like that, it'll just be those two hitting each other with weapons for what feels like hours, then give yourself a high paying job at a gaming company, and then punch yourself in the balls. This is one seriously mindless game, you play as Itchy, and you simply find Scratchy and fight with him. One button attacks, and you literally have one frame of attack animation, which even for the Game Gear is insulting. I mean, it's a freaking portable master system after all, it should do better than this. You just run around after each other for an age, and despite the lack of any quality in the graphics at all, the game still flickers like hell. And the backdrops are miserable, unappealing stuff. To be honest, whenever I start a game and see that the first level has a prehistoric theme, and I'm not playing a prehistoric themed game, alarm bells start ringing. Have you ever noticed that? We don't even know why they're there, for heaven's sake. Surely the ideal place to start this game would be in, I don't know, their house? I'm not sure if these people had even watched The Simpsons before. Hell, even Scratchy on the cover of the game looks kind of odd. I mean, if you can't even get the colour of the main character right, frankly, what chance have you got? Well, just another awful 16-bit release from Acclaim, I suppose. Genuine Simpsons product? Blow it out, you ass. This game can eat my shorts. 
And so another video comes to an end. Next time around, a game that has at points been called one of the worst games ever made will be our featured title. Are you ready to go back to the lands that time forgot? Oh shit, that's another movie, I'll try that again. Let me take you back to the land before time. Ah, oh, bollocks. Uh, screw it. It's Jurassic Park, it's Trespasser, and it's coming up next. But until then, thanks for watching, and wherever you are, whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time.